So Green Bull versus Fuji Tour and basically everything that happened at the Reverie involving the Admirals. Let's talk about it. So I appreciate everybody that liked the last video. You guys smashed the like goal of 150. We're only a couple days in. So appreciate that. As promised, another video coming right away. Let's try and replicate that here. Let's get another 150 on this one and more content will be on the way. So in that video, I talked about Akainu versus Aokiji, the unprecedented fight between two admirals, narrative importance and everything. But they talk about admirals fighting is unprecedented, something that's rarely seen, something that's a huge spectacle. But there was actually another admiral fight in the series. Green Bull and Fujitora fought at the Reverie. Now, what we find out about this is that in response to Fujitora being banned from all military bases and everything, he found a little loophole and went to the Reverie for reasons we still don't know. Now, obviously, we know he had a vested stake in what they were going to be voting on, the Warlord system, but we don't know if he had any talks with anybody there. Did him and Riku come up with a plan? We don't know any of this as of yet. We also know that he met with Vegapunk beforehand to talk about the Seraphims and the SSG, but because of this, Akainu actually sent word to Green Bull, who was already stationed to be at Marijoa, and told him to kick Fujitora out of the Holy Land. Now, what's interesting about this is that we know Green Bull really respects Akainu. We know this from what he did in Wano. You know, he said he wanted to take Luffy's head to show it to Akainu to get that pat on the back, a good job. Yet, he did not want to fight with Fujitora despite that actually being a direct request from Akainu. When they meet, he says, Sakazuki says he wants me to find you and kick you out. Fujitora right on time and shall we do battle then? Green Bull laughs and says, no thank you, I'd rather not. Besides, you're not going to destroy this meeting, are you? So what I like to highlight, and I've talked about Green Bull with his Wano situation that a lot of people like to misinterpret and be disingenuous about to check that out if you're interested in that. But that gives you another example of like, even if Green Bull says, you know, he doesn't really prefer to fight somebody, doesn't mean he won't if pressed, right? But there's a whole different scenario with what happened in Wano. So go check that out if you want to hear about it. With that said, we do know that they end up fighting after this. Obviously, when they first met, this was before the revs had made themselves known what we see from the revs is that karasu is basically taken out they look to be cypher pull agents regular cypher pull agents using named attacks abla suit and soul lotus and then right at that moment fuji Tor steps in and immediately starts slicing all of Karasu's crows with ease, like it wasn't even a problem. We then see that Fujitor was actually planning to call down a meteor. Now, calling down a meteor isn't a sign he was in trouble or anything. Actually, if you go watch my Sabo Fuji video, you know that this is just a sign of him giving a test. He sent one down for law, that's what he did at the beginning of the fight. It's a very, very casual maneuver for him, and it's honestly like a starter. We also got the great lines, two admirals. If this wasn't the land of the gods, they could wipe the map clean between the two of them. Meaning that, of course, in Mary Joa, they have to hold back. Now, the other instance, the other admiral here was Green Bull. His performance was against Morley, much less desirable, because you have Morley basically stabbing through Green Bull's hand and saying, oh, why is this boy so angry? all the time green bull says because you're wrecking the city obviously where did your leader go now the thing with this is that even though morley's stabbing his hand we know that green bull doesn't take damage when you damage his tree form it's basically irrelevant obviously he just can regen it he can come back even from a sapling so he's not taking real damage in that instance Morley also seems to have cut off the other branch's hand, but obviously we know this is insignificant. It's also very important to note what the Celestial Dragon says right underneath, where the Celestial Dragon is literally threatening Green Bull's life, saying he'll be executed if any harm comes to him, his family. So it's a situation where he's being clearly restricted. He's like, how do you expect me to do my job properly? Just get out of here, man. And it's clearly more restriction than he had even in Wano, where obviously like casual, his groves of wrath, he's basically pulling up roots all over the place he clearly can't do that here and we know that he was even holding back in that instance he was only getting ready to fight seriously when they consistently denied his propositions and Momonosuke threw the fire blast at him. But of course, right as he was about ready to get serious, that's when Shanks hockey hit. But yeah, definitely go make sure you watch that video if you want the full explainer for that instance. He's more restricted here, clearly. That's why, being honest, I don't understand why he's even trying to fight with the tree form in the Holy Land. That's super dumb. He should definitely be using the sword with any common sense here if he is gonna be using the sword, assuming it's not a prop. But it seems that Oda really does not wanna showcase that yet, so he's making him do this and showing the restriction but it does make green bull look very very stupid in this encounter so that's the predicament this is always what oda does you know he always puts the admirals in situations where they have to hold back or mental strife or something else but in this case it's no different that's why you have this cypher pull statement that you know anywhere else
else they could wipe the map clean but they do however give some credit to the rev commander saying you know nerfed or not this is still kind of impressive you don't get to see much more from these battles nothing more from the battles actually we don't really know the true gauge and how strong these rev commanders are are they stronger than the average yonko commander wouldn't be surprised if that was the case because don't forget these upper tier guys are captains in their own right they're military captains of the eastern western southern and northern forces the only one missing is obviously bello betty but the three fighting are the other three captains they all have their own vice captains so there's a clear different hierarchy in the rev army also obviously dragons waging this full-scale war against the world government you gotta believe some of these guys are strong unless you think dragon is just like unrivaled he could beat fucking six yonko level characters on his own type shit like crazy shit like that so these guys i wouldn't be surprised if they are stronger than yonko commanders but we'll have to see regardless that's what we saw from those fights now what we end up finding out is that fuji tora at some point decided to help the revolutionaries escape he actually helped them not only escape but he also helped them free slaves directly opposing the world government the celestial so it's a crazy occurrence that he even got out of this alive without being executed if this is such a known fact that cypherpool agents even know about it so that kind of gives you the explanation like yeah the admirals are way stronger than those guys but you know fujitora we know how he is he's super unpredictable he got in his feelings about something and ended up fighting green bull and then that's how they escaped it seems sabo wasn't involved we saw sabo was running around trying to fight the gorus and everything he ran into that and cobra sacrificed his life for him so a lot of people were disappointed sabo really didn't get the fight with some of these admirals as previously thought what we do see from that green bull and fujitora encounter is that fujitora in chapter 957 is shown to be in bandages now chapter 957 is after the events of the reverie so we know that he was damaged here and we know that it seems like he got damaged from the fight with green bull in comparison green bull shows up in wano completely unscathed now you got to take into account that green bull can obviously regenerate so let's say hypothetically fuji and green bull had a fight and they did equal amounts of damage it makes perfect sense that fujitora would still have the effects and green bull would just have healed because he can regen that's one possibility another possibility is of course you know green bull could have got the upper hand but i think that there's two much more likely outcomes of what happened here one i think that fujitora just did the bare minimum to help the people escape and then he probably stopped fighting because obviously he doesn't have an ego about things he accomplished what his goal was and realized like hey i'm not gonna fight this guy here and then that could have led to him getting hurt or something like that maybe he was just enduring the onslaught from green bull to kind of mitigate the situation it's also possible he was punished after the fact and some of the damage on him could be a type of penance where somebody did some damage to him it could have even been a god's knight if they were in the area so we don't know what happened but i do find it very interesting that you know fujitor gets to remain in his position remains an admiral after directly fighting one of his party and aiding the enemy directly opposing the world government and freeing the celestial dragon slaves because when you think about it this is straight up treason so i guess maybe you know we have a recount from jabra who knows i guess if it's true although i think that it did happen and that's the thing that really blows my mind because it's like it's not a secret cypher knows about it so obviously they reported to their higher ups the officials the gorse akainu they should all know that this happened and especially like when you look at garling's words if he was involved if a god's knight potentially punished him you know he thinks that those who protect scum are worse than scum so i don't see how fuji gets out of this without being executed perhaps it's just a simple matter of fujitora's fighting prowess and his importance is so valuable that they just can't afford to get rid of him because there's nobody to truly replace him as an admiral that could be the thing maybe a kainu vouched for him if we ever get the, the reveal that a kainu and him are brothers obviously they have some kind of relationship where they can speak freely with each other despite a kind of being the superior and everything fuji doesn't fear him i could see something like that happening but i'm really interested honestly I'm, i'd love to hear your guys thoughts about it but i definitely think that we're going to get more expounding this situation at a later date but by no means do i think that this was a way to show that green bull is superior to fuji i think that if anything fuji tour is probably going to be stronger in my view i think that they're probably relative but fuji tour is a likely candidate to even be the next fleet admiral for the new generation of marines the new faction that is at the end of the series because obviously we know the marines are going to exist because kobe is a centralized character 
that is going to be a Marine Neo West. Obviously we know Marine Bull hasn't been shown using his sword yet in any of the encounters, this encounter or the one on Wano. Perhaps he used his sword against Fujitor. That'd be cool to see if we get that flashback. So we obviously know every other interaction we've seen, they've clearly been holding back. Same with Akainu, Okiji, Kizaru, et cetera, et cetera. So let me know what you guys think. Drop your comments below. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, it's, it's...